the, the Forest Preserve, how that came about is that we, the original idea, and Chet was involved, it was the chamber, and that we were going, it was a good idea to have a park district. And that's where this all started. The, uh, made a lot of sense and we wanted to have the nuclear power plant involved with that. It could tie in with the school well. The problem was our first the attorney that was the attorney for the Chamber of Commerce ended up misfiling uh, the papers with I'd the like to mention his name, Joel Long. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I'm not mentioning names. I'm mentioning his name because <laughs> I'm mad at him yet. <laughs> uh, and then during, we didn't hear anything back for a while. During that time, uh, somebody at Oregon, uh, through some word of mouth, uh, said, Byron, file for a park district, and they didn't file properly. So you think you think they started it up? So then, knowing that yeah. they might have an opportunity to, oh, they did. They okay. did. Yeah. Yeah. They okay. ran in and did it. It wasn't just like two people going at the same thing at the same time. No. Okay. No. Trevor, we must have had a dozen court hearings. Okay. And most of them in front of Judge Cargaman, who eventually made the decision. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, then they came back. They filed. Then they told us we filed wrong. Okay. And <laughs> as it turned out, we did file wrong. Okay. Uh, we had another attorney involved. Now, this is probably too late anyway uh, to try to revise it. He made some errors that were minor, but enough that the judge uh, uh, threw ours out and gave it to Oregon. Okay. So we were trying to decide what to do. Uh, you know, this all happened in early 1980 or right yeah. in the middle of 1980? In 1980, more of the springtime. Okay. Uh, so then I thought, well, let's give it one last try and I'll talk to Jim Keeling, was, who's, uh, uh, we had used and I knew personally. And, you know, Jim, is there anything else we can do? He reviewed it, basically said, you can do things, you can file, but you're probably going to lose, and it's going to cost you a lot of money. And the part, and you know, the chamber didn't have that. So I left. Their office was downtown Rockford. Was driving back the back way, mm -hmm. and I see this sign, Severson Dells Forest Preserve. And I we'd taken our kids there and walked mm -hmm. around. And I thought, man, I wonder what a forest preserve is, uh -huh. and how to. How do we, you know, is this something that we could sure. work with the park district? So I got a little more educated, called Jim up and said, "What well, you know, what do you think? Is this something we, that we got a chance to do it? So he did some research and said, yeah, because most of, the, most of them are countywide right. and we just right. wanted to have it small. Uh, and, and as I remember, I think there was maybe one other district in the state that had less than county. Uh -huh. uh, so we got back together with the chamber and Chet yeah. and Blaine and I think Bob Gosick maybe. Uh, and what Ben is telling you sounds very simple today, but it was extremely no, complicated because uh, there were none of these things. Sure. You know, we had to use our imagination. I mean, there was nothing out there. Yeah. I, I had no association yeah. for Forest Preserve separate. Yeah. Only the Park District Association was formed. Okay. Yeah. And they were sure well oiled. Yeah, and it, so there was a lot of phone calls, and we said, "Okay, let's do it." Mm -hmm. And the, the original vision was that the Forest Preserve would be able to provide some things that the Park District could, you know, sure. as a got like a golf course or uh -huh. trails for cross country or take them or, or baseball, uh, okay. whatever. Uh, and so. The decision was to go ahead. We had Jim file the papers. And then really the hardest part then, it was you've got to get an election okay. to approve. Well, this was a whole new concept of a forest reserve. Nobody really had much idea. Right. So it was a lot of education, a lot of going to Lions Clubs and speaking at a library and and at wherever somebody would let us speak. And we divided up yep. and then we had committees uh, you tried to have a, 
head of a committee for each neighborhood. Uh -huh. And anyway, there's a lot more work than it sounds. Oh yeah, well that, I mean, <laughs> looking at your timeline, yeah, I think the you had to switch gears somewhere in August of 1980, and then the election was in October of 1980. Yeah. And so you're, you're in educating all these people in the whole district in four months. I mean, that's uh, a incredible. Yeah, feat. We, I don't know how you'd do it, well, we especially had, without social media these days. The opposition <laughs> was the fact that you're going to raise our taxes. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. tell me more about that story. What do yeah. you What do you mean they're going to raise? Oh, like that's that's that that's the no one your understood the value of right. the nuclear plant. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure. So yeah. that was so that was your biggest opposition. Oh yeah. It's like well, if I ask you, do you want your taxes raised? You're going to say no. Right. Yeah. Exactly. No, nobody wants. But so the idea was explaining how the nuclear plant could benefit the area. And you'd, some people say, yeah, that's what you say now, but it'll never work. Mm -hmm. And But we were able to convince enough people right. that, and, and I think a big help there was Chet and Blaine, who were very well trusted and known in the community. I was okay. a new kid. Sure. But they they weren't and uh that helped get the momentum behind it uh and the election uh passed not by as much as we thought yeah, that's right uh, i think uh, as i remember it was around 57 43 roughly for both yeah, of them right. so now we thought okay <laughs> <laughs> now we have the election passed. What do we do next? <laughs> so Chet and I got together, and my interest was in the Forest Preserve because of my background with my uh, father, and and Chet's interest was the Park District, sure. and that we would be better off separating sure. the two boards, uh, you know, right. our, our direction. Uh, so the next big step in the Forest Preserve is because we were less in county, then it it had to be a, appointed by the county board. You mm -hmm. didn't have an election, the county board had to approve it. Uh -huh. And so we talked to people who had a strong interest, Dr. Jarrett obviously won, and, and, uh, and others, uh, Barb Lucon, uh, that would be interested in being on the board and I can remember having the meeting at City Hall, and I had I had a little politics explained to me of how things work <laughs> as a, as a new kid on the block. And uh, but yeah, that that's okay. I needed that advice, and uh, so then the county board approved the first board. Was that hard to do? Or did they was it was the county board were like were they ever like? Well, why don't you just do it for the whole county? Why are you doing it just for Byron? What, did you have any of that? Uh, no, I don't think that issue ever came that up. Is, I don't ever recall yeah. that issue ever. But recognize they didn't know anything sure. about forest reserves either. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I don't. It, basically, it was working with our uh, representative on the county board and basically what I was told, which is the truth. If they approve it, then it will mm -hmm. get approved. But then there was a sort of a re-education Right. Of that person, of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And then once he recommended it, right. I just thought it would automatically happen. But there sure. was, let's say that was a little more difficult than it might okay. say. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And I learned a few things. <laughs> uh, uh, so then the, the next step, at, we formed and did the file the proper papers with the state. And, and then the next step was to get a director. Mm -hmm. And I can remember we were down at the school. Uh, we they let us use yep, some offices, yeah, yeah. offices, which was very nice. And I can't remember if it was two or three candidates that applied that we interviewed. Uh, I figured I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> or you'd well, never have gotten a job. <laughs> well, as I remember, there was one other. <laughs> okay. There might have been two, but I know there was one other. But Jack obviously had the best credentials and the background. So for the, the, the board is formed mm -hmm. and approved, and then you hire your first employee, Jack right. Philbert. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, now, I don't remember. That was several months after sure. it was yeah. formed. Uh, and we wanted to make sure we had 
papers filed so we actually would get money and uh, you know and obviously had an attorney helping us getting everything filed properly okay uh, so that we could get and then Jack once he came on was used to how to do those things yeah. and educated everyone yeah. <laughs> uh, on proper procedures sure. for a forest preserve because we right. we didn't know. So you had you had no what a forest preserve is. It was, was it was it a foreign concept? Well, to you been, like the, these guys, or was it? I had been in conservation for about fifteen years, and um, through political influences. They wanted me uh, um, transferred to a site which was, oh, 130 miles, Carlinville, Illinois, to remodel it. And I had finished one site for them, and I had only three state parks. And uh, then all of a sudden I had 20, and uh, I was traveling day and night. It, an article was in the Register Star, I believe, and one of my relatives saw it, that Byron there it is. formed a forest preserve. Well, I'd worked with forest preserves before, but not here. And um, I read it, and then I came down and visited two of my friends in Byron. One of them had moved to Rockford, Dr. Glenn, and his wife. He was a psychiatrist, and then I came down and met with them. Uh, an outstanding chiropractor in the area and his wife and we had gone to Japan together and I discussed it with him what was going on well I was making about 30,000 at the time which by the way was excellent salary and uh, but I was traveling day and night my girls were gr growing up and my wife was said it's your decision you make the moves and uh, I offered to come to work for them for half price, and they hired me. To get an example of what occurred when we first hired, they had done so much good groundwork in selling the people that there were a couple of conditions that had been kind of placed on one or two of the board members. Now, Doc Jarrett was wonderful. I, I loved the man, and he's... He was a psychiatric veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> he interviewed me pulling a calf at Nancy McLaughlin's farm. I didn't he know was one of those. <laughs> well, he was shocked that I knew how to do it. Uh -huh. And I was, my father owned farms, and he had general stores. And I had worked on the farm a lot. My background was I was an administrator in Minneapolis Park System for Revenue, which is a huge system, and, it, and even in those days it was over $10 million in my budget. But that was all revenue other than taxes. Mm -hmm. Then I was the administrator for the Rockford Park District for three years under a contract to build an ice rink and a couple of other things, a trolley and a boat and some other. And I was really getting tired of driving. Yeah. My last job with conservation when they gave me the 20 state parks was investigative auditor. And we had problems. Oh God, every one of them. We even had men go to jail while I was in that <laughs> office because of their corruption. And it was um, under the Thompson administration and I happen to know most of them. And I just thought, this is ridiculous. I'm a certified conservationist, and here I am doing political work. Mm -hmm. And I came down and asked for an interview, and they subsequently hired me. One of their problems was that they did a hell of a job getting it organized. But right off the bat, they were so excited that they went out, and first thing they did was lease 40 acre, 80 acres from Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they didn't we walk. We were a little the, giddy. <laughs> they, they didn't walk the property. Half of it was a cyanide dump. Yeah. Okay. I started so that was just building, a lease? Well, I started building them the lower 40, a, a forest preserve <laughs> for them. And it was nice. We had kids out there. We had honey. I put in bees, you know, and all this stuff. Apple cider I would come to find out the trees had cyanide in the <laughs> apples. But we found it out early. Sure. And we got rid of it. Yeah. 
but then the the whole board kind of unified under Doc to not cross the river. So we had to find a piece of property on this side. Well, he took me everywhere. And he knew everybody. Uh, in fact, the Hogan's, my God, we're out in the middle of the Hogan property. He's walking me around and driving around in his truck oh, and sure. car. Uh -huh. And here comes Buck. And Buck's ready with God. Hell, he's got a gun with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. it was the show and tell. Yeah. But I said, what are you doing on my damn property? All this stuff. We're going to buy it. <laughs> but it is still, it was one of the prime locations. It had passive flower. Pass flower. Uh -huh. I mispronounced. Sure. But um, it, it worked. We found this site. This site had more accessibility to us than any other. And about that same time, the highway department decided they were gonna modernize the bridge. And they needed some of this site, which we had already negotiated for. And it was the start of a good relationship with them. Okay. The farmer that owned this site was a sheep shearer. What was his name? He lived in the house right okay. down. I've got to apologize. Yeah. I've had a couple of strokes and I yeah. don't have a good memory. But I'll remember it. But he made his life <laughs> as I'm walking out. Sure and sheep. But his wife actually owned it. Yeah. And he wanted to make a fortune out of it. And the board rightly just postponed, negotiated, and postponed. But he found that we were interested. Mm -hmm. And um, it came in parcels. We didn't get it all from one. Ed and I are got us a little piece. Yeah. Um, we always were looking at bucks, but we kept our mouths shut because he <laughs> shot me. But uh, it, it ended up that this had more prairie indicators than everything except the property that was recently acquired with the, the cottonwood tree. Okay, Bald Hill. Yeah, that one had some indicators, but we never went over the slope. Okay. I never knew there was a tree down there. Sure. But, uh, and we also looked at up by uh, Severson Dells, there's a piece of property you got mm -hmm. up there. Oh, we wanted it, but wrong side of the river. Mm -hmm. So we stuck to that. The Any... way we designed this facility was a little unique. We had a man on the school board uh, that was superintendent, Bill Brown. And wasn't and he on the board here? He was on our board. Yeah. And Doc told uh, he me. He wasn't that, on the first board. No, oh, not okay, on the first board. Okay, okay. No, okay. I'm he was on a later board. You're okay. right. Yeah. But he, um, Doc says, you know, he's got a PR ability. He's, he's a real, well, they call him a con artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I want you to draft up a sketch of what you foresee for this site and give it to him and let him present it to the board. Well, I just took a piece of paper, half the size of that board back there, and I real quickly sketched this area for a golf course, which I felt you had to have a revenue producing facility. And then the rest of it was prairie, which Doc was all for. Uh -huh. And I handed that to him and it's on file here. And he came to a board meeting and Bill, Flamboyant, Lee presented say that. <laughs> his ideas for this future. Okay. And I'll tell you, they bought it and we ended up building it. Awesome. And it was a pleasure. This prairie, by the way, was seeded by buying seed from Boy Scouts. And uh, we had to stay within two counties and they would go down the railroad tracks and collect it for us. Okay. Big Blue at that time was going for about $26 a pound. We ended up paying wow. the Boy Scouts about $6 a pound, <laughs> and we seeded this by hand. And you can tell what came out of it. Yeah. We, we did pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. funny that $26 a pound is, it might be a little bit more than that, but that's pretty similar price to the mm. seed today. It, yeah, it's, there's for farms big, For Big now. Blue anyway. You've got farms producing it. Sure, no, yeah. right. And of course, we can produce it too. But and it is a side issue of the bridge is they had it the bridge right. proposed originally, and there was no bike path or walking path. Okay, and now they weren't going to do that. Now that's too expensive. Then we pointed out that in Dixon, 
they had just done that in Dixon. Okay. It just, I mean, three years before. Right, just before. Yeah, and I brought, I brought pictures here. You <laughs> did. Oh, no, we never do that. We never, well, here you just did it. Mm -hmm. So finally, you kept going to the meetings, and towards the end, the drawing had a bike path. <laughs> and it, it's the only yeah, snowmobile yeah. with qualified crossing on a state highway in Illinois sure. to today. Okay. So this, this happened before the site was acquired? No, yeah. we had to acquire one piece. Okay. Yeah. But it, it was really almost a separate sure. issue yeah. to, for to get the bike yeah. path and the walking paths. Right. And, and right. the idea was then it would tie, Actually, it would tie recreation from the city or right yeah. to... Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was, you know, a whole different group of people that... Sure. Or pretty much group of people. Sure. Paddock Talis was one that went with me and worked on it. Oh, you could... Th this board was very flexible. Well, time was in our favor. We were getting pretty close to 90% of our revenue from the assessment on the plant. Mm -hmm. And the plant decided to sue back against the school board in Oregon to lower the assessment. Well, we all joined together, if you remember that. Yeah. And uh, we negotiated with them a 10-year agreement. Intergovernmental okay. Agreement Board. Okay. And it finally, it worked out much better to our, I think we ended up at nearly 97% oh, yeah. or. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Now it's down, of right. course. Now it's about yeah. 70. Yeah, it's a dropped a lot. But of, of our total EAV. Um, but the whole concept of the prairie here was because of the soils and what we found. And uh, my background being so heavy in revenue resources that <clears throat> I felt because of the Byron plant being our, our main source, I always did back the idea of at least one good revenue producer. Yeah. But it had to be justified. We had the best deal you could want. We had a county with only one 18-hole golf course. And our biggest objector to building the golf course was a man who owned a nine-hole course. Today, it's an 18-hole course. Mm -hmm. He claimed we'd put him out of business. Silver Ridge was not 18 holes at that time. It was originally nine. Yeah. Okay. But he made money because we opened sure. up the attraction to Rockford. Okay. Our, uh, we figured with demographics that we did that we needed to steal 10% from non-residents. We could survive on 30,000 rounds a year in those days easily and have a nice course. Mm -hmm. By the time we got done, we were up to as high as 42,000 rounds. Sure. The course, to my knowledge, has never broke even. I think it's always paid for itself. And that's exemplary of what happens when the tax rate changes. Mm -hmm. It's still holding its own. Yep. So when you're, when you're fi when you went to filing with the park district, this is back, you had, you had a, you didn't get it. Oregon got the park district first, yeah, right? right? Yeah. And now you continue on with the Byron Park District? And we hired this attorney from Rockford to file uh, for, and we were first, way first, uh, but the filing that he did was inaccurate. It was not right. And Oregon found out about that and they quickly filed on top of us. And then we ended up in court for a year, Ben was. Well, less than a year, yeah, but, yeah. but it was and, close uh, to that. Okay. I felt I was in court more than I was in my business because I was out in Oregon. It seemed like every other week. Sure. But in the end result, the judge ruled uh, that they they had the thing to they had the right to take it, mm -hmm. and they did, which in essence is probably all right because that's the only thing they've got. And today, their park district is subsidizing their school district. Mm -hmm. They have an intergovernmental agreement. So in reality, that was good for Oregon. At the same time, uh, Bill Young, who was then superintendent of our school, and I, uh, I was president of the, of the park board at that time. We wrote the first intergovernmental agreement here, uh, which is basically still in effect over, over there mm -hmm. now. Uh, which is which is a really a good thing. You know? Sure. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, they, they were talking about people stepping on toes, which I was good at. <laughs> uh, Bill Young and I had a falling out, and Bill was uh, really wanting the Forest Preserve to do more 
than what we were doing with him. And one of the problems, the difference between a park district and a forest preserve is all in statutory declaration. Mm -hmm. Forest preserves can spend at least 10% on recreation. Park districts can spend 90%. It's the reverse for preservation and acquisition. Forest preserves 90% mm -hmm. must go to preservation. That's one of the reasons that Bill and I fell out. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to give him a little bit more than what I felt we could. And luckily, it was, well, he wanted free golf. Oh, sure. He also wanted me to monetarily maintain his campus. Sure, yeah. Well, I maintained at the request of the board a park for the city. And that was a nice little government agreement. I don't know if it's still in effect, but they built a fire department on it and a library. And it got it so small that it was hard for me to transport in town from out here. And I just yielded, and I guess they took over their own. And they never got mad at me. But, but Bill got mad at me. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bill, I just Bill Young was a board. brilliant man. Well, I couldn't, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, but I couldn't bring it to the yeah. board. That's no, why, yeah. right. But Jack, tell him a little bit about how you started with the Park District and built that up and what well, <laughs> and, and, and the, the school. Uh, for a long time, of course, we couldn't afford, we didn't have any money at all. We couldn't afford a director. Uh, did yeah, Bruce come about the same time you did? dollars one year. Yeah. Did Bruce come the same time yeah. you did? Yes. Well, Bruce came after me. Okay. But not very long uh, after. So but right after. We, as the board, uh, ran the initial, of course, there was sure. no rec center or anything like that. And so then you, had, you had whatever. zero employees, just a volunteer yeah, board. Yeah, right. We ran the thing for, for several years, and then eventually, uh, with through the intergovernmental agreement and the fact that we were getting a little bit of money, uh, we hired the same time he was hired, we hired Bruce Armstrong uh, to be the park district director. Uh, and, and the history of the park district, from my standpoint, is very, very good. I was on the board for about 12 years. Uh, the board continues. Uh, they continue to do a good job. The intergovernmental agreement is still in effect. Uh, I think they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, was there a was there a separate um, uh, vote for the park district and all the other taxing districts? Yeah. All every separate every times? district was separate. It, 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 separate yeah, times. Yeah. Well, except yeah. the Forest Preserve and the Park District were voted on at the same time. Okay. Well, that'd be all right. You're right, Ben. Yeah. They were. Right. They were. Yeah. Uh, we when we did the speeches, everything we did, those were done. You did them both. Yeah, we did. Those were both done at the same time. Okay, so and there was one vote. You two separate items to vote okay. on, but both voted on at the same time. And both like around fifty-seven yeah. percent, as I so, remember. Okay, that's I mean, that's pretty good uh, that that they got two of them through and like. Becky Little, Little say, and I are working on trying to resurrect some of this history too about who was a board member when and all that sure. sort of thing. Becky, of course, still employed by the by the high school mm -hmm. and was the secretary for the park district at that time. Okay. So, and, and so she's a very and valuable me. asset. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she worked for both That's of them. Right. That's right, that's yeah. right. And she chose to go with the park district. You can sure. tell I stepped on her toes <laughs> too. So at this point, <laughs> You've only been here for five years, but you're pretty invested in the community. You're putting all this time into, you know, all, I mean, outside of your normal work hour, I don't know how you do it yeah. to, to go out and educate all these people and then to be an advisor. Well, it's a good thing board. Ben and I were in business yeah. so we could get away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean uh, are, you stuck, are you here for good? I mean, yeah, to, be, yeah. to be doing all this community work for the community that you've only been I know, here I just, five years. you know, it's, it, it, it really meant something to us. The, the town, this is where we were, you know, we were planning on staying, we were hoping it'd work out, but we, you know, we had small kids. So we also had, when we moved here, we had twins that were six months old and we had the other daughter that was two. Uh -huh. So so I was probably taking time away that I should have been at a home son. But uh, no, it, so I, but I got in with the right right people uh, that, that really, <laughs> well, one of the, this isn't exactly, but I, I want to tell this story because it was, I thought it was, so, and I don't, I think this was, I'm not sure whether this was before the Forest and Park District or after. I think it was after. So we decided that, okay, the library really needed 
to get mm. involved with it, you know, and, and have the, the nuclear power plant as part of its base. So Blaine and Chet and I went to the meeting. And I think Chet did the most of the presentation and he was talking and he was the most well-known and knew a lot of the people. And, and you know, this is what you need to do. Right. And very, very well done, very logical, makes sense. And they said, oh, we're not sure about it. <laughs> Uh, how much is the election going to cost? And I don't remember the number, but I yeah. think it was like twelve thousand yeah. dollars, which at that time was a big deal yeah. because we were all making like uh -huh. like yeah. I think I was making eighteen or something yeah. like that. Uh -huh. right. And and Jet piped up. Well, if you know if it doesn't pass, the three of us will pay for it. Well, I was sort of the young kid on the block here. <laughs> and Chad just looked at me, we'll, we'll pay for it. Well, three days later, we get a letter from their attorney signing a note Okay. for one third of the cost of the... <laughs> okay. Now, on the other hand, there were some really motivated people. I bet. <laughs> to get, to get <laughs> that one passed. <laughs> Which is a very tough job because you're going. It yeah. could be you're coming to the community and say you want this taxing district and this taxing district and this taxing district. And it's like they're getting hit, bang, bang, bang. Yeah. So to educate well, them, don't forget people this, to be, this was a farmer culture attitude. Yeah. The right. entire everything you did here was affected majority by farmers' attitude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Trevor, if I might, and I know this isn't about the museum, but the museum was different, and I thought. Uh, the museum building, the one on the corner of the Reed House, yep. uh, had a restaurant in it forever. Okay. Uh, and all of a sudden it closed up. And uh, a couple of weeks after that, at the Chamber of Commerce meeting, uh, I stood up and I said, folks, I think we have a chance to do something here. Uh, to buy this building. I think they wanted 39000 Is that what they wanted? For I don't them? remember the number. But anyway, I said to the chamber members there, we need to come up with some money. And that day, that day, that group came up with $13,000. Wow. 13 members each came up with $1,000 and put it in the pot. And that's how we acquired the Reed House. Okay. And then we found out that there was no museum districts in the state of Illinois that weren't under the auspices of a town. Okay. Uh, so that was quite yeah, a battle that, that we had to fight, but we did, and uh, we successfully passed that referendum in 1990. Okay. Uh, prior to that, once again, the board was running the thing. Uh, we were having fundraisers. We had to make the payments. Right. Uh, we were having fundraisers and having various things going on so we could get a few bucks and and uh, uh, it, was, it was a grand time, really, it really was. But in 1990, which is the same time as the county board election, we successfully created the museum district by the voters. Okay. And it's still, I think to this day, the, oh, only, you're the only one. The only museum district in the whole state that stands alone. Wow. All the rest of them are city under, operator. under a town. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Realize there's so many different levels that you can yeah. have the same thing, that they overlap. But like Rockford has a county forest preserve, mm -hmm. Rockford has a park district, Rockford has a nature center um, district. They have, I mean, there's right. all types of levels that each yeah. can share, yeah. but the intergovernmental agreement is a secret. Yeah. Sure. A lot of people don't know about it. And that's all... That's when you can cooperate with yeah, the people. museum district yeah, does it's have the people the that plan. Yeah. It's the people that make up that that yeah. that the relationships that you build. Would you say that to get yeah. those to work right? Well, a, a, a good example of how we could legally, we gave you an exhibit at the museum for years. Well, I thought I think it was yeah. like three or four years. We had a train exhibit. That great big train. Mm -hmm. yeah. We hired a man to miniaturize Byron. Byron has a fantastic milk train history. They're one of the three cities that furnished milk to Chicago solely for Chicago that kept a train running every day of the week with milk cans. I loaded them at 6 a.m., unloaded at 6 p.m., and they went to Chicago with milk. Well, we miniaturized the city and made an exhibit out here for an attraction. Well, it was obvious that, it, yeah, you're past your due time. Uh, 
it was obvious that we couldn't afford to leave that here forever. It was, it was too big and it didn't, it wasn't germane enough to maintain. We gave it to them. We could legally, under an agreement, give them that, but we couldn't sell it. That's a weird, it's a weird statute, but intergovernmental agreements allow you to take care of those subjects on occasion. Sure. Yeah. Well, change that. One thing I want to make sure I get in here, and so sure. you're aware of it from now than not, is uh, the Forest Preserve not only has the Byron School District, it has another section of land in that district, which is where if they would add a Junis three and four. Okay. Uh, Blaine, <laughs> Ocker, Blaine Ocker worked and helped buy a lot of the land for it. Yes. So he had seen the plans. Okay. Now at that time, it seemed like a high likelihood that they would build three and four. Sure. So that land, and I'm not sure, I don't remember now what district, Forest Reserve was the first one that had that. Uh -huh. And some of the others, yes. we included it, I don't remember yeah. which you one. Added it? Uh, yeah. Well, I actually included it when, well, I, I think the library was done second, I think. But just so people are aware, if you see okay. a little jog out there gotcha. by the power plant. On the property <laughs> boundary? Yeah, the property boundary. That does not match the school district. Okay. And I didn't know that. And that is their, uh, that's proposed where, site for that was, uh, now many years ago, that was proposed. So we wanted to make sure we sure. had that if they built three and four. And, and at that time it appeared well, they would. Okay. three and four was talked about up until, uh, I think, uh, probably Chernobyl. Okay. Yeah, um, right, right, right. Uh, right. Uh, that. And Trevor, if Blaine Hawker was alive, he would be sitting right here too because he was sure. very much involved oh, he helped us. in all of these formations. Yeah. Sure. Uh, he was invaluable because he knew everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. And also, he had a big influence with the farmers too. Right. Oh yes. More so ever. than Doug oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know where that the the jut out for three and four is geographically? It's right across the street from where the plant is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd forgotten where it was. I remember yeah. it was in right yeah. across the street. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I mean, the likelihood of that happening now is probably low. Yeah. Okay. What well, um. When it comes back to educating and, and voting for this, what was or who, whether it's a group or was your biggest opposition? And it's, what was some of the things that you had to overcome, I guess, when it was trying to educate people about starting up the Forest Preserve? No, I, th I think the only real opposition was they're afraid we were going to raise their taxes. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, yeah. And, I, and I wouldn't say it was one group. Yeah. Uh, well. I, yeah, I would say there there was tended to be more opposition from the older people. They didn't people. understand the concept of the assessed valuation and what the nuclear plant okay. was going to do for us. Very and, few people. And try as we might, it trained. was hard to get them convinced. And, and but I, I think we got enough convinced. But you know, there were some that just they weren't going to listen no matter what. Right. But, but you know. Uh, uh, we, but Trevor, we never had any any vocal opposition. No, opposition. Okay. we didn't have no, anybody. No, nobody organized signs or sure. anything like that. There were people who were kind of passive or weren't interested. Probably voted no, uh, but uh, they didn't fight us. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, and we used some of the techniques because we before then I don't remember what then. Uh, Barb Lucon and I were on the committee to, to get the referendum passed for building the high school. Okay. And in that case, we, uh, the school had money to hire an advisor. Okay. And, and so they would tell us right. how you organize, how you do the car, how you, mm -hmm. how to do it. Right. Well, in the forest and park district, we used we didn't hire them. We didn't have any money to buy them back, but right. we used the same techniques right. <laughs> that, sure. that we'd use there. And are they a little? Well, obviously they're they're designed for you to win the election. Uh, so yeah. you you try to bring out the people that are going to vote for it, and if the other people show up, fine. Uh, <laughs> if they don't, right. fine. So <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So do you? Do you, off the top of your head, do you remember what a, a voter turnout looked like back then? Or I mean, that's something we can look up easily. Probably well, not forget, we were a very small community. Yeah. Oh yeah. Voting sure. wise, we didn't have 500 registered voters when the Forest yeah. Preserve was formed. Sure. 
Yeah, it, I, 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 don't, I don't remember. I don't right. remember. <laughs> right, right. But yeah. that's why you would have someone for each neighborhood. Right. Right. That was a strong advocate. Uh -huh. And then that was their responsibility to get the voters that were right. in favor of it. Right. To remind them and then maybe give them a ride to the polls. And uh -huh. I mean, that's just part of Paul. I mean, right. that's just right. part of it. There's nothing underhanded about every, everybody does it. Right. right. Now, Doc, while he was alive, on his own, I don't think he included Chet and Ben, but tried to get Stillman Valley to annex into the Forest Preserve. Did he ever come to you with that? No. Sure. Oh, he, I tell you, he, he drove me bad. He, he, I had to work here. He'd send me over there to speak to a teacher or somebody he thought that was interested. <laughs> Obviously, he had taken care of their cows or something, you know. <laughs> and uh, they were not interested in joining us. They just weren't. And yet it would have been beneficial to them. Yeah. You know, one time... Uh, we had a teacher here named Cotter, and his brother was superintendent of schools down at Marseille, yes. Marseille or whatever it was. Bill Young and I, the superintendent of the school, and I was president of the, of the park board then, went down there and spoke to their whole board and told them what we had done here and how well it had worked out and everything happened. They never did a thing. Okay. They never took advantage of anything. Yeah, so I mean, that, basically you guys are seeing that I mean, and your major selling point here was that the nuclear plant is going to provide all this value, or the, provide the the monies to fund a, a lot of the stuff that that well, and in our case, can do. in Forest Preserve case, that was loaded the right way. Uh -huh. If you could acquire your land that you wanted, it didn't matter as the depreciation occurred if you didn't overload yourself with expensive side projects. And there was one um, side project that I've observed since we left, that one director wanted a recreation program, and he spent a lot of money on recreation that didn't have a, a, a justification. Mm -hmm. That was his problem. He didn't do his, he probably didn't know how to do a yeah, feasibility right. study, <laughs> but he was a nice man, don't get me wrong. But his interest was recreation more so than preservation. Sure. Or I am told that. That's hearsay. Again, well, as long as we're talking about a little history, I, I need to insert that without the Byron Bank and Bud Thompson, <laughs> a lot of things would not have happened, too. I would like that on a record. Sure, right? sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bud Thompson? That's my father-in-law. Okay. Gotcha. And, and it was the Byron Bank... What time, when did that start up? Well, so I figured Chet threatened them all that he wouldn't repair their goddamn <laughs> toilets. But. Uh, actually, it was uh, uh, First National Bank of Byron okay. when I came here. Okay. And uh, then... Ben came here with an engineering background. No one thought yeah. he could be a banker. <laughs> yeah. He's turned out wonderful. Well, I, I, did, I did have my master's in business. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, there were, when I moved to the plant I worked at at Winchester had 5,000 and employees and Byron probably. Was that Alton? Yeah, East yeah. Alton. I was superintendent of parks and recreation <laughs> down there. <laughs> so when I go to work, there was no, not all of them were there at the uh, same time because yeah. you had shift work. And then you came to Byron and it was maybe 1,500. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't remember. Yeah. So it was a, but it, right. it, it fit in with what Gail and I grew up with. It okay. was about the size of town. And, you know, so my parents were always involved in community mm -hmm. things. Dad, of course, more forestry. Right. And, and my mom was all kinds of other sure. things that she donated her time. So I was used uh -huh. used used to that. Did you take uh -huh. your bill? So, yes, uh, you know, you. Yeah, it was just sort of expected it if you were part of there. Right. And no. we were the old timers, just you know, minutes, old timers right. there. That's and a uh, so it's just finally what, oh, you, yes. what you did. Sure, sure. <coughs> I got one more specific guided question, I guess. And that's a, a little bit about the mission of the Forest Preserve District. So right now the mission is preservation, recreation, I'm sorry, pre preservation, education, recreation, and kind of in that order. That's kind of our priorities. Was that the priorities back then and, and when it first started? And, and how do you first models? And how do you come up with how do you come up with your first mission? Is it, is it the board? Is it, it? Well, the board has to approve of everything. Sure. One of the things that a good director, and I don't know if I was, but I enjoyed it, is that you pleasurize from 
qualified and outstanding sites. I kept my contacts, just discovered that he and I have both lived in Alton, Illinois. I was with Winchester as a franchise consultant mm -hmm. and uh, until the, the Frenchman bankrupted. it. And uh, I became the first director in Alton, Illinois. And we inherited the uh, mental illness hospital. 500 acres was given to the park department. And we ended up building a uh, um, Palmer golf course, 18 holer, for nothing, Nelly, because of the way we statutorily in worked with other governmental agencies to get the hospital. But long and the short of it, if you know other places that do things right, you pleasurize it. There's nothing to be secret about the fact that our rules and regulations I pleasurize from the Rockford Park District and Minneapolis Park System. And I didn't pleasurize too much, but on horticulture from Alton. But Alton had a tree program. Ben, I don't know if you remember it, it was called Pride Incorporated. It's national now. And uh, we did street trees that wouldn't grow into the top wires, you know, and everything. Every time a big oak died, we'd put in a little short tree that wouldn't grow. Well, that whole idea was a concept for our memorial garden here. Now, I've got to admit, it's, it's not being utilized anymore, but the, the, many units have copied us. Sure. Rockford has a memorial tree garden that is just gorgeous on one of their pieces of land. And if somebody passes away, you can donate a tree to it. And it is, it's, it's going like a house of fire in other places. Sure. Now, it's not here, but that's it was here. Mm -hmm. The reason it's not going here is that you've got so much more concentration on development you're getting all these lands, you've got a lot of work on you, on your hands, so you can't concentrate on little things. I would say my original concept was more, the, the only forest reserve in Illinois I'd, I'd gone to was at Severs and Dells, uh -huh. and we'd taken the kids out and walked around, well, it's pretty, pretty, pretty. pretty. So my my vision when we started is something like Severs and right. Dells, sure. and where you've got the, the house, and, right. and you bring, you know, like the kids in, and, yeah. and they would have the Girl Scouts, and right. boy, that was my, that was all I had to go on, sure. and then, and the forest, preserving forest land, I thought, well, well, we'll be able to do that, that right. too. But that was sort of like forest. Now, and that's not a huge area, mm -hmm. but but it's very well done. I I thought, right, and that was more what I I envisioned. Sure. Uh, and then also I envisioned at the time that didn't you know that of a golf course, but I was also envisioning that you would have some baseball diamonds and the school would have, you know and those type of things. That didn't happen, and logically it shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. But that was sort of what I was sure. thinking uh, 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 at the time that you know, we right. would have. Right. With the right agreement, they can do it, though, to some degree. Sure. Well, so then you, the, the this building here, when did what year did that this building come in? And then was that I guess with this? Well, I think we started. I guess not necessarily this building, but um, the first building that you could have brought people to to provide some education. Um, well, that was like a school, like a school property class. because we used them. Well, and then that the, really the first building was out at, as at Hilo, the, you know, the ComEd property. Yeah. And, and there was a house there. Okay. And you had brochures. And we, you know, what we did was <laughs> the 80 acres that they leased they had a farmhouse on it with a little garage underneath it. And we brought kids out there and we... We had a fine Ranger Rick program. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you've got pr probably 20 <laughs> times as many programs as we had. But we could have honey making. Uh, by the way, we have our own uh, uh, apple cider plant. Sure. You can press all you want here. By the way, people really wanted our apples <laughs> <laughs> because ours were uh, not sprayed. <laughs> Therefore, they had protein in them. And um, they thought our cider was a little dark. Well, worms squish up dark. <laughs> and boy, it was good cider. 
Uh, we, the first year we did it, we sold 200 gallons. <laughs> that was a big thing for us. You well, know. The, the show you the county world I grew up in is my father was an outdoorsman and you know grew up on the farm, and I can remember with my dad and we would we would hunt bees, mm -hmm. and you would go out in the summer on a glade. And you'd leave some water, sugar water with sweet anise. I'm not sure why you use sweet anise, but that's what you did. It works. <laughs> and, and then you've heard of a bee line, so the bees would head towards their tree. Okay. So I'd yell at dad, here comes one, and then dad would keep heading more that direction. So then you'd try to get three <clears throat> angles. Okay. And then then you could, you know, you get close to the tree, you can hear the humming. Okay. And when you, the Southern Missouri, this was the honor system. If you then put your initials on the tree, that was your, okay. that was that your, was your tree. Five. Okay. And then it uh, didn't matter if it was on your land or not. <laughs> no, no, really. The, the, but the understanding is then you get a group of guys and pick up trucks and five gallon buckets and some of them in the bee suits and you go out in the fall. Okay. When it's cool. Okay. And they smoke and, and then people would carry the, the buckets, then you gave about a quarter of it to whoever owned the land. Okay. So they, you know, you tell them, you know, I've got a mark, we're gonna, and, you know, and, you know, there was no set rule, right. they were just, right. but, but you know, to actually go out and hunt. Wow, that's uh, crazy. Now there were a lot of bees down there now, they're not as many <laughs> now as we used to be. Uh -huh. Back then that was, sure. they were all over. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that, that's that's a little different world. <laughs> now, yes, indeed. An example of what we were stealing from other people because we just didn't have a staff initially is the Weisskopf Observatory. I still went to the round table when I could, when we weren't having problems with the construction on something. And uh, the round table in Rockford included about 30 different park districts and forest preserves and stuff that would show up. And uh, one day, uh, somebody came in and said, well, Weisskopf offered to, an observatory to Webbs to take it out to Longwood Park. Well, we had two scopes out there already. And uh, I kind of got a feeling that Webbs didn't want it. So I called Dr. Weisskopf. We heard it from the round oh, table. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. That you're giving away. He says, yes, if you can have it out of my yard in two days, uh -huh. it's yours. It included a telescope, everything. Yeah. He had built it for his children. They had outgrown it for some reason. Man, I'm telling you, Bob Smith and our crew were up there the next day with Charlie Holton. They disassembled that thing and brought it back in a van and a pickup. Uh -huh. yeah. And they had it down here, and we weren't too sure the board was going to accept it. <laughs> we had to propose it. <laughs> they bought it like, yeah. like and that's been a pretty successful program to still today and, and you know you're very successful a, very popular you're on the third or fourth tallest mm -hmm. spot in the county mm -hmm. and it's, it's a good location there we might be uh moving it again out to bald hill uh more so because of some you know where the city's kind of growing around us out here there's a little more light pollution but bald hill provides a better spot but anyway you may not that. be aware of it but there's a, a dedication of this facility to the nature conservancy and in that map if you ever look at it there's a strip from outside here all the way down nelly to the river which was left for a revenue producing facility have you ever heard of Lexon? Yeah. A Lexon toboggan run <laughs> was talked about. Remember at one time we wanted to put a, a tall building with an observatory at the top or a classroom? It didn't go over very good, but they had a model made of it. Uh, the highway department at the same time was putting an observatory out towards Galena on tall poles and it's demised. But we have a strip of land left open for a Lexon toboggan run. <laughs> now, Lexon on Lexon is like glass and ice. Mm. Sure. And uh, there's one at Pokagon State Park that makes very close to a $100,000 profit a year Ooh. because they don't ice it. It's Lexon. Uh -huh. Okay. And they don't have to do any maintenance on it except replace a sheet of Lexon yeah, yeah. if they need it. 
and they put runners on the bottom of the toboggans, about six of them, sure. of Lexon, countersunk <laughs> screws, and it attracts people from four states. So it's you're phenomenal. so you're saying if I look at the Illinois Nature Preserves map of this site, you'll there'll be a strip there'll be blocked a, out that's a, not Illinois Nature Preserve because you wanted it to be a revenue. Wait, just, in case, just in case. Just in case. It's interesting. there. Well, that's like yours. You know, there's also a, a location for a marina, which has a very unique uh, possibility. The river here goes east and west. The opening to where they were thinking of putting the marina is right next to the bridge and it's backwards. So the water flows past it and doesn't do any damage. I have two marinas that I was involved in, one in Alton, by the way, which flooded every year, we expected it, but it was in flood plain. But the one in Minneapolis is built that same way. And whenever these terrific floods come, doesn't matter, it's floodplain. Mm -hmm. The water has a place to go. But it doesn't wash anything out because it's below <laughs> right. the river flow. You've got a couple of things. When we bought that little strip from Holio <laughs> for a dollar, yeah. it was a drainage ditch. But remember, it led right up to the boat club. Right, right, And right. you guys were aware of it um, on the board. You approved us to accept it. We gave them the dollar, too, by the way. And uh, now you own the boat club. Yeah, and now we're developing. But, by the way, it's really pretty down yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a great preserve, and we're still developing. Oh, it's going to be ideal um, for canoeing or yeah. rafting. The, the mouth there of the Leaf River, we're trying to... Uh, yeah, and we ha we have some ponds, so there's some spring ponds that weren't there. It was all sedimented in. It was a great place to take kids out for forest preserves and catch frogs and stuff like that. And it's still a work in progress, and we haven't had a good dry year to get a lot of work done down there well, yet. Well, that's but. the other thing. We were hoping that someday we could dredge a few, uh, um, yeah, slips. Yeah, we're working with the fish revenue back up to, to for, you can afford to make money. Yeah, uh, I'm in the Verde Club in Rockford. We get a thousand dollars a year for each of our slips. We have about twenty-four of them for the club, mm -hmm. and we rent them out for a thousand dollars a year. We put the we put the ramps in ourselves each year and take them out. But boy, I'll tell you, boaters are looking for places to hook up. Oh, boats. sure, yeah. yeah. And you have no gasoline down here. Mm -hmm. Where can you get gas for a boat? Yeah. Oregon. Yeah, no, I don't know. No, I don't think you know, right? uh, I don't yeah. think so either. Well, That's Trevor, I, I want to mention one little thing because I think it shows subject. the cooperation between the units. Uh, we had the reed house and the floor was terrible. You mm -hmm. could see down into the basement. So we tore it all up and now we decided what are we going to do? The Forest Preserve donated a dump truck and they donated all the trees and Jim and I took them to Broadhead, Wisconsin and turned them all into flooring. And today, if you go into the, the Reed House, you see the most beautiful floor, all different kinds of wood, every wood imaginable, every bit of it came from here. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's worth looking at. Well, I, th I mean, it's, yeah, it is. there's a lot of strong intergovernmental agreements working today with the Forest Preserve, with the Park District, with the School District, and even the city of Byron now, and uh, yeah, we I think all the districts well, recognize know, recognize how time. well it well, it uh, yeah. you know it works to share assets, but it's all for the benefiting the same community. And obviously, it all started with yeah. you guys and building those relationships and all that stuff. So well, the bike path that's there by the school. That's right. Oh, that was. Yeah, you know, the township did some, the forest preserve, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Norb did some. That's a good one. And Herbig did some. Right. And then we had donations that we bought things, but a lot of it, and then the school did some. Mm -hmm. they, they agreed to keep it mowed and, right. you know, and plowed. So everybody worked together. Now, once that got in, then, you know, the forest preserve did, of course, sure. this part out here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and then the city basically got the other part, uh -huh. uh, back there but it was the original part was all the groups working together yeah yeah that's great i don't have any more specific questions i mean i want i could i could probably sit here and talk to you guys for forever <laughs> well about we could it. do if you want to know every forever. little detail right 
<laughs> well, I I think this will be a great this will be a great start for what or, and we'll be able to make a, a lot of good take a lot of good information from this and Becky and I get a lot nice. of that information back on the on the park just show get it to you sure and yeah. it's just yeah it's just good to have and again I really appreciate you guys coming today and sharing your story and and of course doing everything you did back in the 1980s to get this place up and running and because it's a uh, it's a great asset to have in our community yeah, and well I've got to compliment your board and the boards that have followed mine that they've done a fantastic job of improving and expanding yeah. what should have been and should be done yeah it was a grand time sure mm -hmm. we we needed everything and we had the people that were willing to go and do it I think we were all excited. We were having fun. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was a good time. You guys oh, did a it great was a job. good time. That's for sure. Yeah, you guys did a great job. Except for Bruce Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I didn't pull very many caps. Yeah. <laughs> something that you should realize is not everything yeah, was I'm successful. Still good friends. Yeah, I'm sure. We don't talk really? about the ones that didn't work. He's in right? anger. <laughs> He's in anger. He's there were a lot of things that were started. Yeah. That, oh, uh, that seemed like a good idea. I married an English girl. Or you'd go down this road and then, no, yeah. you, you couldn't go any farther.